What are we going to do today? What do you think? Yeah? You want to review a generator? Okay. Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a review of the Honda EU 2200i generator. A lot of people have given me some real positive feedback about my EU 7000 review, so I thought I'd do another one. This review is going to be a little bit different though, because it's going to be part of a two-part where I'm going to do a review of this Honda, and I'm also going to do a review of its competitor, which is the Yamaha EF 2000 IS generator, and that's the version 2, which is the current one. I got some extra help today. What do you think? Which one are you going to pick? The Honda or the Yamaha? I don't know. You look pretty comfortable with that Honda. <laughs> so let's start the review by looking at the generator itself and the control panel. One thing on the Honda you're going to notice right off the bat is that all the controls are on the end of the generator. And the reason this is important is because if you're transporting this, you're typically going to pick it up by the handle and you're going to slide it into a space. And when you slide it in, if all of that equipment is or plugs is located on the side, you're going to really damage them. So I really prefer having the control panel on the end of the generator. And this matters because a lot of generators do not have this type of setup. It's on the side and you'll see some other reviews I'm going to do later. So, and my preference is to have it just like this. So I think Honda really did great with this setup. You've got two standard outlets here on the side that you're gonna be able to power your equipment with. Again, keep in mind this is an inverted generator and that means you can run the most sensitive electronics. You're really gonna get about the cleanest power you can get out of this generator. Next thing you wanna realize is that you've got a plug here, even though it doesn't look like it. This is a, um, outlet that you can plug a special cord that Honda does not include with this generator. You have to purchase it. It's about 20 bucks. And that plug will allow you to charge 12 volt car batteries and small 12 volt appliances. A lot of people have asked if their car won't start, if they can jump their battery off of this. You absolutely cannot. So this is only for um, charging batteries and I don't want to use the word trickle because this does put out 8.3 amps as you can see here that's a lot more than most trickle charges tend to be between like one and three so you're still not going to be able to start it um, but the good news is if you do try to charge one of your um, 12 volt car batteries you will be able to charge it quicker because it does have a pretty good amount of output at 8.3 amps next thing you have here is a circuit breaker this circuit breaker is designed to protect these outlets. If you draw more than 20 amps as it's labeled, this will trip and this little button will push out and you can just push it back in. Next thing to be aware of is you have a grounding um, mount here. So this is important. Some codes require that you use this. In my personal experience, I've never used it. You've got three LEDs here and they're labeled oil alert, overload alarm, and output indicator. So these are gonna basically explain um, at a very basic level of what's going on with the generator. The top LED oil alert, that means you're running low on oil and that will shut the generator off, but this light will light up red so you'll be aware of what happened. Second overload alarm, if you draw too much power beyond the 2200 watts, um, you will eventually overload it and this alarm will go off. So you can reach the 2200 watts, but you can only do it for a certain amount of time. and you um, really don't need to worry much about anything, but if this light for overload alarm goes on, the generator will typically go into a slowdown mode. And essentially, if that light comes on, it doesn't mean you destroyed your generator. It just means that you're going to have to shut your generator off, disconnect the electrical load, and restart it. The output indicator, you probably can't tell much on the video until it's on, but this light is actually green when it's on. When this light mean, comes on green, that means these outlets are putting out the right amount of voltage, the 120 volts. Next thing to be aware of is you have a switch here that says Eco Throttle, and there's an off and an on position. So this sometimes is a little bit confusing for people. So when you first run this generator, if you have Eco Throttle off, what that means is that you're not using any eco throttle and that means the generator will run at full speed, full power. And that's fine in a lot of situations, but if you want to get the maximum runtime and maximum fuel economy, when you put eco throttle on, what that's going to do is that'll allow the engine to slow down to match the electrical load. So that's actually a good thing, especially if you're running for long periods of time. Eco throttle means it's like a smart throttle and it's going to throttle the engine up and down. So that may help explain it a bit parallel operation outlets. So these two, um, these are actually sockets here. There's a special accessory, a cable set. So if you have two of these generators, you can plug them in together. You should be aware though, 
that depending on your application, you can either plug two of these in together or they make a special companion generator, which is the mirrored image of this, except it gives you a special um, outlet that you don't get here that's for use in things like RVs and things like that. Um, but if you're only gonna run the one generator alone, you really don't ever have to worry about that. So the next thing that Honda did that's pretty cool is this is no longer just an on-off switch like it used to be on the EU2000. On the EU2200 that you see here, this is actually has three positions. It has on, fuel off, and then off. So some criticism that Honda used to get was that when you would just switch the generator off, you would be basically loaded with fuel, and for many people the gas would go bad because they would leave it sitting. And the competitive Yamaha generator actually has um, the ability to turn the gas off independently. Now Honda's answer used to be that people should um, take the maintenance cover off and drain the carburetor, but most people aren't going to do that. So what you really need to know now is that when the generator is on, if you want to run it dry, as a lot of people will call it, you will switch it to this middle position here, which is actually just fuel off, but the generator is still on at that point. And then when you switch it off, you'll hear the click because that's an electrical shut off and at that point the generator is off. So this is a pretty clever feature and for um, this model this was really a good upgrade for a lot of people. Here first off is your pull starter. It's very convenient. So one thing that Honda did with this version of the generator, if you look at the old EU2000, very often when people would pull start it they would pull it at an angle and the rope would eventually right where my thumb is, would actually burn into the plastic. It was like a rope burn, and it would melt the plastic. Now, it didn't cause any real problem to the generator, but it looked terrible. So what Honda did is this is all now metal, so that the rope will just smoothly glide on it, and you won't have that issue anymore. So on the gas cap, you notice that we still have a nice, convenient vent. So we've got it on, and then over here, you've got an off. So all this does is it just seals the gas in so that if you have this in a vehicle or whatnot, the fumes are not coming out. So that's what that switch does, is that controls gas fumes if they're able to come out or not. So on this particular model, I have a small hour meter that I installed in it, and I'll show you how that's done, but this is not from the factory. The rear of the generator, we've got the exhaust and the muffler are contained inside the case, just like the EU2000 was, so it's very convenient. So let's take a look inside the maintenance cover on the Honda and I'll show you a few items that you need to worry about to take care of your generator. Again, I'm a huge fan of how Honda makes this very simple. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver, but it's also um, slotted so that you could even just use a dime or a coin. So it's a single screw. Unscrews and what they call this is a captive screw, which means that when I unscrew it, the screw doesn't fall out on the ground, which is a, another thoughtful feature. So as we take this cover off, you'll notice Honda's attention to detail. They've got a nice foam gasket around the outside of the generator. So, you know, a lot of criticism about the Hondas is that the prices are expensive, but I think as you look at the generator closely, you'll see a lot of attention to detail, and at least it makes you feel like you've got a good value. Honda does a great job with this generator in terms of layout. Everything is really easy to get at. So the first thing you'll notice here, this is your oil fill and also your dipstick for um, checking the level, but also for changing the oil. Another change for this year um, with the EU2200 is this is much larger than the one was on the EU2000. So it's just a little bit easier now to change your oil and also check it. And they've also done one more thoughtful thing is they put this little rubber ramp here. The old generator, when used to change the oil, it was like they designed it to make a mess and there were a lot of aftermarket funnels made. You really shouldn't need any of those now, so when you unscrew this, you just simply tilt your generator a little bit, and that little ramp will do the job of letting the oil come out, so it does a really nice job. So you probably won't need this much, but this is your carburetor here, and the reason this is also important, on the bottom, if you can notice, there's a little tiny flathead screwdriver here, and a hose attached, and this is still for people that want to drain their carburetor out for the winter or for long-term storage. So again, it's very convenient. You can get a screwdriver right in there and put a, you'll put a container underneath and they've even got a little outlet there so that the gas can be collected. Next maintenance item to be aware of is you've got this little cover right here, another one of the same type of screws that you had on the maintenance cover. This whole unit is your air cleaner here, super easy to replace. You could replace this in probably less than a minute. But we'll replace the cover. And you notice there's two tabs in the bottom. Makes it really easy. What I really like about this whole setup is that there's not a lot of fuss to put it back together. 
So the next item you need to be concerned with for maintenance is actually on the other side. I'm going to rotate the generator. So, and I mentioned earlier that this hour meter I installed myself and underneath this little cover here, and you just need to use your finger, lifts right up. This is where your spark plug is located. And, you know, don't take this for granted, but Honda really did a great job laying this out. It's so easy to change your spark plug, not that you need to do it very often, but they make it really simple. So if you were an RVer or you're somebody out in the rain and you need to do a service on this, it's really nice because there's just not a lot of stress and there's not a lot of fuss. And for those interested, this hour meter is simply an item that just sticks on. You feed the wire through, you wrap it around the spark plug wire. There's no absolutely no cutting involved. And when it's done, you just use a nylon tie. And this electronically picks up the spark and that's what drives this meter. This just snaps back into place. So now the fun part, we're gonna start the generator up. So I'll take you through each step and I'll show you how it works. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do, hopefully you put your gas cap in the right position. The key to this is here, is you can see this little tiny line. It is not the long part, which fools a lot of people. That's just so you have something to grab. So you wanna put this so that it is to the on position. You can see that there. So now what that means is that the air is on, I guess you could say, or the air is able to flow through. So that's how you normally do it when it's running. Next thing we need to do is we need to turn this switch to the all the way to the on position so that it's ready to start. So when you're starting an engine cold, you're gonna to wanna to put the choke on, and you can see here that it's labeled. It means choke is gonna be on when it's in this position. So right now the choke is off, so we're gonna turn it on. So at this point we're ready to go and we're just gonna give it a simple pull to start it up. So it's gonna run rough like that. So that tells you that you don't really need the choke on. So we're gonna turn it. So now we're not using our choke at all. hear a huge difference in the noise and I'm sure you can hear me a lot better now so right now because I have nothing plugged in this generator is just running on the minimum speed so it doesn't really need much at all because it's not outputting a lot of power so with it in the on position this is the quietest it'll be so with me six feet away it off we're going to turn this switch in my case I'm going to go all the way to off and one thing you want to remember to do when you're done running it you want to always switch your fuel valve back to off and you have to remember really to leave the eco throttle in the off position so the next time you start it it's going to run at maximum speed which is the correct starting procedure Okay, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Honda EU 2200i generator. It's an awesome machine. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you click thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more great videos. Thank you.